A quarter of Iowa's corn and nearly a fourth of its soybeans are rated as poor or very poor, according to the latest USDA state report. The triple-digit heat that recently passed through Midwestern regions was the hottest for that state since July 2012. Farmers there have faced a difficult growing season after delayed planting due to moisture and now trying to keep the crop alive due to lack of it. What might be even more concerning for those who got the crop in the ground late is the possibility of an early frost. On Wednesday, we talked with Elwyn Taylor from Iowa State who said the average date for the first mild frost in western Iowa is October 4th, while the first killing frost normally comes October 14th. Less than one out of ten years, that hard freeze has come before October 1st, but never before September 22nd. With these hurdles in front of the country's largest corn and soybean producing state, we wanted to see how Iowa's crops were holding up. Elwin said the deluge of water at the beginning of the season started a mirrored pattern with one of the worst growing years in the state's history. We looked at how atypical that was. Does this happen very often? Well, it had happened very similar back in uh, 1947. 1947 was a year that was very, very wet and planting was delayed. There were some other interesting things happened in 1947 that also happened again this time and made us get even more concerned. First, 1947 turned out to be the third worst corn yield year in history for much of the Corn Belt, especially the western half. Second, when we got to May, we had snow, record snow in fact, in 1947. That record wasn't broken until 2013 in May. We had record flood at at least one location in Iowa, that was near the city of Cherokee, that with their record flood was set in May of 1947. That record wasn't broken until May of 2013. We had another similarity to 1947, and that was temperatures went from snow within two weeks to 100 degree temperatures. We broke those temperature records, in Iowa at least, this year. So we began to think we might have a year that was going to track 1947 and be right in there with the historically third worst crop year. Uh, since we've been keeping records, more than a century of corn records. When I say worst crop year for corn, that means the yield most below the trend line. You have to look at the trend and see the percent deviation for it to be a meaningful thing for how bad it is because the crop keeps improving over time. And so we look at the percent deviation. Well, it did persist just like 47, right up until the end of June. Uh, and then uh, the rain quit like it did in 47, but in July of 47, we had a switch to above normal temperatures, 10 to 15 degrees above normal. It persisted all through August and into September. Fortunately, we didn't have that kind of heat this year, and it at least has been the salvation to keep it from being as bad as 19. 47. Wondering what that heat did last week though, Elwin. It was nasty here in Nebraska, but uh, in Iowa where there isn't much irrigation, what did it do to the crops? Well, of course, by the third day of temperatures over 94 degrees, you begin losing several percent of your potential that's left for your crop uh, each day. When I say several percent, I'm talking about more than four percent per day. And so by the time we got to day five, we had taken quite a bite off of the crop, especially the crop that was somewhat water stressed. We did have some water stress in more of the crop than you would expect, but it's because of how wet the spring had been. A lot of people planted under conditions that weren't ideal and the crops rooted poorly because of how the soil reacted to the planting. Some places the rooting was shallow because the moisture was so high in the soil that roots didn't grow well. And so we did have some limited root development. Other places did quite well, even through the heat, where the roots were down their full five feet. One farmer from western Iowa called me and said he's amazed at what his crop's doing. 
I said, I'll bet you've got eight foot deep roots. Normal is five foot for both corn and soybeans in most of Nebraska and Iowa. And he said, do you think so? Called me the next day and said, were you serious? He got a backhoe out there and the roots were down seven foot, five inches. That gave him at least an extra five inches of water that his crop had at its disposal to carry him through the warm time. With that late planting, Elwin, how big is the threat now of an early frost damaging the crop? It's a real concern to a lot of people for both corn and for soybeans that we might have a frost situation that would uh, catch things uh, when they were just too green or not mature enough. And uh, that has happened sometimes in the past. Uh, it's always a disaster if it happens very early. And of course, even if it happens rather uh, near the normal time, uh, this year, that would be too early for many of our fields of both corn and soybean. And at very minimum, it would leave a high drying cost for the grain. And at maximum, it would be a great loss of potential yield, as well as the extra drying that would be required for the crop. With those things in mind, uh, is there a target that uh, you or other experts are looking at for yield in corn or soybeans? We pretty much agree with what has been uh, the opinion of both the markets and of the USDA that the U.S. Uh, corn yield would be somewhere around the mid-150 bushels area, well below the 160 bushels, which is the trend line for corn if we should have a normal year this year. We know there will be a few states that are meet the trend, maybe a couple that are above. But in the western half of the Corn Belt, we expect the crop to be somewhat below the trend. You were talking a lot about 1947 and sort of how this crop is trending along or the weather was trending along with it. As you look at the crop, does it look as rough as what we see online or what we read online? Uh, we always seem to get the very worst looking fields when we see something published. People don't very often say, here's the worst in our neighborhood, here's the best, here's some average. They just put the worst one in. So for the most part, things really aren't quite as bad as they appear. When we hear the amount of crop in good to excellent condition, and if the total acres in good to excellent condition for your crop reporting district is above 50%, 50% in the good to excellent class, you are headed for, at this time, an above trend line yield.